right. I'm gonna hit my timer. It's nine o'clock. Let's get to it. Thank you so much for joining me for my first ever 10 minute burst of innovation. Quick housekeeping. Um, if you have questions, obviously everyone's on mute because it's too much background noise when we do it uh, different ways. If you have a question, put it into the chat bar. I can't promise you that I'll get to any or all of them, but I, but I would love to have them. And if I can, if we have time, I absolutely will. And if we don't, I'll find other ways to answer those questions in blogs or on our website or in our newsletter, however we can. Thank you so much. So good to see you all. I thought for the first one ever that we would just, I don't know, get to it and dive right into a relatively um, intimate topic, I guess, which is around innovation, fear, comfort, and constraint. How to recognize them, how to overcome them. Um, I mean, let's face it. I think most of the time what keeps us from being innovative isn't ideas. We have them bubbling up inside of us all the time. It's actually those three things. And what you'll find as I talk about it is they're often self-imposed as well. So let's dig in to fear, comfort, and constraint. I have a story for you, kind of a personal story that shows how it shows up in our everyday life. And then one killer exercise that I want you all to do at the very end that will help you recognize how those things show up for you and give you that opportunity to kind of take inventory, assess them, and figure out how to overcome them. So let's delve into fear first, because that's, I think, one of those, like you feel it in your gut things, right? And we know we, we, we fear failure, we fear the consequences, we fear um, looking stupid, we fear looking unworthy. I mean, I think the fear list goes on and on and on. And it shows up as anxiety or stress. And usually it shows up as us talking ourselves out of speaking up, out of doing something that we want to do. Um, and here's the thing about fear I want you to know. Fear is actually hardwired into us. It's primal. As humans, we, we have fear. And that's why I actually think the whole dare to be fearless is kind of silly because we can't eliminate fear. But what I'm hoping is when we recognize how it shows up for us is that we can actually move past it um, and overcome us. And you know, in the old days, fear is what kept us from being eaten by a saber-toothed tiger. But in the modern world, fear plays tricks on us. Our mind plays tricks on us. In fact, I recently read a study that shows that 85% of what we fear or what we worry about doesn't even come true. So we worry that our boss will think our idea is stupid. We worry that it'll fail. We worry that we're not the ones that should be having this idea and other people will shut us down. 85% of that doesn't even come true. Most of our fear is actually highly self-imposed. We use that fear to shut us down before we get those innovative ideas out there. And I think this is particularly true with innovation because it feels it feels risky. It feels uh, like being on the edge a little bit. And that is a scary feel, I don't, feeling. I don't know if anyone here has ever bungee jumped or I don't know, done any of those kind of crazy things. It's like that moment on the ledge where you're afraid of what's happening because your feet have to go off. That's the feeling of fear. And fear often is what holds us back from innovation. We can't have innovation without fear. It's not about being fearless. It's about embracing that fear and figuring out how to push through it. Like I said, the exercise in the end, is gonna help you kind of recognize that in yourself. So that's fear. The second one I wanna talk about is comfort. It is, I feel like I have to hold my coffee while I talk about comfort, it's nice and warm, right? This is my comfort, this is my crutch right here. Um, it, let's face it, it's easier to stay where we are than it is to shift, right? Even if we don't like it, at least we know it. At least we don't rock the boat. Comfort is us trying to stay safe. Comfort is us doing what we've always done to avoid that unknown, to avoid that shift. In our minds, it's to avoid being unsafe. And again, our brain is hardwired to be safe, right? Again, in the jungle, saber-toothed tiger or in the Sahara, wherever it is, um, we want to be safe. But again, in today's world, that comfort and wanting to feel comfortable is actually what holds us back. Let me talk about the third one, and then I want to share my, my story with you that kind of brings this all together. The third one that I think is what really the sabotages us from being innovative is constraints. And what I mean by that is constraints of the system or the environment that we're in. 
sometimes those are self-created. Oftentimes they are the systems that we work in. We work in companies and with teams. And, you know, I can't tell you the number of conversations I've had where someone's come up to me and said, hey, I've tried and I've tried, but I just can't even beat down and beat down and beat down. Like I'm done. I'm kind of over trying to launch those ideas because I just can't get any traction and it's exhausting. Um, here's the thing about constraints. Oftentimes, it's actually even more insidious than we realize. That example I gave you is someone who kind of could see the constraints, but oftentimes we don't even realize it's happening until that kind of ball and chain is weighting us down and um, we're so exhausted we don't want to do it anymore. But it's this tiny little kind of like that, what's that phrase, death, death by a thousand cuts? Kind of feels a little bit like that. Like just constantly being shut down and shut down and shut down. And that's culture, that system, that's routines that we've created and didn't even know we created that shut things down before we get them out there, before we actually um, innovate. It's really hard to get around that brick wall if you don't even recognize that brick wall, that brick wall is there. So with constraint, I want you to think about your environment and where in that environment is constant, you're constantly getting shut down or maybe you're shutting other people down and don't even realize it as well. And again, that can be culture, that can be process, that can be system, that can be routine. So to sum those three up, these are the real big sabotagers in our desire to be innovative, our desire to bring that innovation to our work and to our lives to contribute in a way that's meaningful, fear, right? That's that kind of fear of the unknown, that gut feeling, that stress, that worry that holds us back, comfort, desire to play it safe, desire to do what you've always done, desire to just, you know, know be with the devil you know versus changing things, and then constraint, the routine environment. Let me share a quick example with you. So um, I have this Greek diner that I go to all the time. I mean, it's my kids and I go, I think almost every Saturday after hiking or whatever kid thing that we have. And one day, my son turned to me and he said, hey, what if we go and try that new restaurant um, down the street? I want to know if their food's any good. And I was like, oh, no. I turned to him and I said, Liam, like, it was like it turned me into fight or flight mode. I said, Liam, what if their food's bad? Like, I don't want to risk having a bad meal today. And he looked at me and he said, mom, is having a bad real meal really the, something that that's, is that risky? Like, do you really care that much about it? I was like, oh my God, I realized what happened in that moment. I like conjured up all this fear of change. I wanted to be comfortable. I wanted to go to the place where I could recite the men menu front, back and sideways. I wanted to have the meal that I know will be decent enough and not risk something that isn't even that big of a risk. That's the irony of it. And you know what? We did go to the new restaurant and it was fine. It wasn't that great, but I had conjured up all this fight or flight in my head, all this fear of trying something new, all this desire to be comfortable. And the routine that I'd created, this every Saturday going to this Greek restaurant, became my constraint. And I didn't even realize it. I was so in the habit of this going to this one place. And it made me really think about where in the rest of my work and life am I letting fear guide my decisions? Am I letting constraint? Am I letting comfort guide the way that I'm trying new things, that I'm putting risks out there, that I'm being innovative. And I think you'll find if you kind of take an inventory too, it's in more places than you think. All right, let me get to this killer exercise before my buzzer goes off and our 10 minutes are up. This exercise will, like I said, will help you recognize, help you identify, and then help you push through. Now, when I do this with groups, they don't have the benefit of hearing the whole exercise at once. You do, because I want you to have all of it. Here's the thing about the exercise. If you don't do it, you won't get the benefits of it. So do it, report back to me. Here's what you're gonna do. You're gonna go to a cafe, or you can do this in a meeting with a team. You're gonna pull out a blank piece of paper and a pen, and you're gonna give yourself, or your team too, 90 seconds to draw somebody that you do not know, or that you know the least. It can't be the one that you text, can't be a friend, someone you really do not know, a stranger is preferable. When that 90 seconds is up, I want you to go and I want you to show them your drawing. Just say, I drew this. This exercise brings up so much fear and so much need to be comfortable. Some people won't even do it because they're afraid that the person on the other side will judge them for their bad drawing. And I hear things when I do this with people of, oh, you're not, um, you know, you're prettier than this. Um, I'm bad at art. This is not my forte, right? That's our fear chatter talking. That's our desire to be comfortable. 
And in the workplace, it shows up as it'll never, whoop, my timer just went off. Let me finish this thought. It'll never work. They'll never go for it. Who am I to have this idea? Do this exercise, 90 seconds, draw someone, show it to them. And then, and this is where the rubber meets the road and you get the insight. I want you to take some inventory of what happened. How did you feel doing it? What was your mental chatter when you showed it to somebody? Did you try to justify the drawing by telling them, oh, I'm so sorry, I'm not good at this. This is just, I'm doing this experiment because Tamara told me to, right? And then how did they actually respond? Most of the time it's with laughter and smiles, but, and how did you respond to it? How did the experience feel to you? And then I want you to answer the final question of where else am I having this mental chatter of fear and comfort and constraint? They're holding me back. It's an identification of it that you can actually push through it. And actually you can start to leverage the, those feelings to be innovative and to get those things out there. But most of the time that chatter happens quietly in our brains and we don't even realize it. And that holds us back from being innovative. Fear, comfort, constraint. Go draw a stranger and then email me and let me know how it goes. Our 10 minutes are up. I can't even believe it. Thank you so much for joining me. If you're on our newsletter list um, or in our community, you'll get the recording of this. If not, be sure to go do so so that I can get you this. All right. Thank you. Such an honor to have you all, particularly on our first one. So appreciate all of you. Mwah. See you next time.